Hello, everyone. It's Robin from Center Street Decor, SVGs and more. I am very excited to um, paint here today. I'm going to paint our Mother's Day sign. Um, let me show you. It's a small, sweet little sign. So I have this in the Etsy shop. This is a SVG file. And this is about, oh, I would say about a four by six. But I'm actually going to do a second size and it will be in the same file. I'm going to make it larger. So for those of you who have purchased this file, I will send you a message and let you know so that you can get the larger size. Um, it's easy enough to enlarge this, but when you enlarge um, an easel, they don't fit together quite as easily. So the new file will have a um, two different easel sizes. So, and then two different uh, Mother's Day signs. So this is the one that we are going to paint today. It's a quick and easy, it would be a great seller for those of you who have um, shops. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tip you down and we are going to paint this. So it's so sweet. So let me tip you down, bring you down so that you can see what I'm doing here. Whoops. I move my camera and then everything just starts to move a little bit, so. Okay, and I'll just leave it tipped just a little bit. So if someone comments, I will see that. I'm just gonna put my little readers on, which really help. So what I did is I actually cut this out. This is cut out of um, quarter inch, or sorry, an eighth inch birch. So that's what I did, I cut this out. And these I'll cut out in the same um, in the same area, and then I just put some tape on the back to hold my pieces together. So I'm just going to paint them just while it's laying right here on the wood, and then I have my leaves that will go on my flower right here, and we'll just paint those separately as well. So, and then I have my round right here um, now, or my oval. It's more oval. So this here, I actually have pre-painted and then I masked it and then I cut. I like to do that with a lot of my backgrounds um, if I'm doing some scoring and then I don't have to worry about painting it, but you could do either. And I have the, the engraved lines on here and then all the score lines as well. So this was actually cut out of MDF, but I had a, a sheet of MDF that I had painted white and then I'm gonna we're gonna take the masking off in just a bit let's go ahead and start with our our easel and then our frame piece and I liked I wanted it to look a look still like wood you could paint it a solid color and that would look beautiful too but I am going to go ahead and paint it um, so it still has that wood look to it so let me put these aside and how I do that is I like to just use um, a baby wipe to paint with, and I'm gonna use burnt umber just to give it that dark look. Probably way more than I need, but that's okay. So what I'm gonna do is I just tap it in my paint and then I just tap onto my wood, and then I just rub it in. You could also do this with a sponge, whatever you have handy. So it's quick and easy. This project is a quick and easy, and sometimes as a crafter or as a maker, you want some projects that don't take too long to make, but yet, are a good seller for you. So that's what this design is. So I'm gonna do both sides. And I don't worry about any of that, um, those, those burn marks on there. Just gonna wrap it all in. And then you can still see the woodwork. Let's 
do the second easel. We're almost finished with the easel. And I have some of that, those wood fibers lifting up. But what I'm going to do is I will, I will use my sander. And we will, after it dries, we'll just kind of rub those off. Okay, let's, let's do our frame here. Just gonna lightly go over it and then just rub it. Rub all that paint in all those wood grooves, all in the wood grain or wood grooves. I don't know what you call it. <laughs> okay, and I sometimes when you use um, wet wipes, you get some of the wet wipes stuck in it. So just pull those off. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that aside. And I'm done with this. I'm going to put that aside and we're going to let that, let these dry. And then we're going to give it a little bit of a sanding. Okay. Let's bring the star of the show down. So on this, I did um, kind of some two-toned painting on here. I'm trying to make sure I get in the center of the frame. I'm kind of not very centered. Um, so... I did kind of pinks right here. And what I actually used is I used, this is a pink melon. It's a folk art. I've had it a really long time. So I don't know if that color is still available. And then I used a red apple from Apple Barrel. Um, I know you'd think that was really red, but with the blending, it, it doesn't so much. And then I used a couple, the greens that I used for the leaves, these are Valspar colors. I used glowing leaf for the lighter and then eucalyptus for the darker. So those are actually what I'm gonna go ahead and use. But instead of using going pink, I'm gonna do some peach colors this time. So I went ahead and grabbed this Flamingo Coral by Apple Barrel. And then also this is called Medium Flesh. I thought the two together would be good. And then, oh, I also use a little bit of white on the tip of it. So this is just a paint in the bottle that I've had in here for a long time. Last long time putting them in the bottles. I do like to put them in the bottle. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to start with, I like the darker on the bottom and then the lighter toward the top. So that's how we're going to, we're going to do that today. So I'm going to get some of my Flamingo coral and the medium flesh. We're going to put that down too. And then while we're at it, we'll just we'll put some of the white. We don't need much of the white. Okay, we can put those aside. And I'm going to use, whoop, I'm getting it in my white already. I am going to um use sometimes when I do um, sponging I use just little pieces like I'll cut this into quarters and that's fun too but this time I'm actually going to use the full piece and I am going to dip one side into the darker and then another side into my lighter color and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of walk it back and forth just to blend those two colors. And then I think while I'm at it, I'm gonna just hit the tip of it. That's probably more than I want with some white. Let's walk that, walk that out. So my white almost becomes not very white. Okay, let's go ahead and start with that. So toward the bottom, I'm going to do, if I work on this one first, so, and I'm just going to pounce it back and forth. I think I'll come up because I want the bottom a little bit more peachy. A little bit more peachy. Oh, I like it. Okay, we'll just kind of let that Let that dry a little bit. 
and I'm going to go over it one more time. So I'm going to I'm going to reload. Just going to pick up some of that peach or the 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 darker and then the medium. And then I'll hit just the tip of it. I want to get less white than I got last time. And pick up more of the color we're using in the middle. Walk it back and forth just to blend it. Okay. Back on this one. I'm just going to let that one dry just a little bit. Sometimes I start lower and need to go higher because I want that peach to blend a little bit more. Or I want the darker to come up a little higher. I'm going to pick up some of this lighter on here. Because I find the top is not getting too much color. Come back on this one. So once I go back over it a couple of times, then I push a little bit more firm because I want, because that wood grain is still exposed and I want to try to cover up that wood grain. You see how we have it blended? Let's do a little bit of that white. And then I can put a little bit of the white across the top. Just that, those taller letters is what I'm doing. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to pick up a little bit more paint. Blend it out. And we'll come back to the word friend. And then just go over it until you really like the coverage on that. And I think I'm liking that. I think I want to get a little bit more on this L. Oh, it's not an L. It's a D. The top of the D. Okay. So now that I have those, I'm happy with how those look. We're going to go ahead and do... Um, our flower and I'm going to kind of do the same process. I'm going to pick up some of the darker and the lighter color. And then if I need to pick up some of the white in a minute. And I, I took, if you look at this one, I did the darker on the center. Hey, Christine, how are you? Oh, thanks for hanging out with me. So we're going to go ahead and paint that flower. So I'm going to do the darker kind of on the center of that one. So, and this time, I'm just going to kind of go around in a circle. If I just go around in a circle, then that way it will cover the whole thing. I see I'm not picking up quite enough light. We thought, I thought it would go with peachy colors. Oh, you just got off work? Well, thanks for coming and hanging out with me. I need to pick up some more of this. middle middle color so i painted the other one with some kind of some rosy colors so this time i thought we would go ahead and do some of the peachy do some peach okay i think we should do better this time i got a little bit more paint on my sponge so i'm just walking walking them around here It's looking pretty good. Just do a little blending. I'm going to get that center just a little darker. And again, just kind of go around in a circle is how I'm doing the flower. And I think I want to do just a little bit more white on the tip of that. So I just picked up a little bit of white and I'm just using the same sponge on all of the pieces. So I just kind of keep picking up the paint and blending it. 
Okay. So I'm just dabbing just the outside petals. just to bring a little bit more highlight. I think it looks good. Yep, happy with that. I think it looks good. Okay, so these are finished. So I still have my leaves to do. They're right here. And I'm just gonna set that aside. So here are my, um, oh, here's my frame. I'm gonna say I lost my frame. So because they feel really rough to me, I am gonna go ahead and just take just a sander. You could take a, take just a piece of sandpaper and I'm just gonna rub them because whenever you get them, get wood wet, those fibers lift up. And I used a little bit of, well, wetness with the paint and then wetness using the baby wipe. Just gives them a nice, gives them a nice smooth edge. Which is your favorite, Christine? The peach, the peach flower, or then the first one I did with the rose colors. I think they're both pretty. Which is your favorite? And then when I sand this, it gives it kind of a, oh, it, like a farmhousey look, a rough texture. And I like that look. I want it kind of, not a solid color. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm gonna pick this up and then just kind of turn it over for my those fibers. And I'll clean them up later. I like the rose color too, but I thought I would do something fun and different. I like the, the peach is just a fun look too. So, okay, so these feel good. They feel so much better to my hand. They don't feel rough. So we can set these aside. Christine, I was um, I was mentioning with the file, I um, I actually enlarged the file and then I have a larger easel. So I'll send a message to anybody who purchased the file so that they can get the larger easel. So the larger size I would say is more like about a nine by six ish, where this is like a six by four. So I have a larger size. So um, so then you will get the larger easel because it's easy enough to enlarge this, um, but it's not easy to enlarge um, the easels because then they don't fit snugly together. So anyway, just wanted to share that with you. So I'll make sure to get you that, um, that file. So, okay, so this is um, what I was talking about before. This is a piece of MDF and I, I pre-painted it white and then I added some uh, masking over it. Um, and then that way, because we have the engraving, you can, I mean, easily paint over the top of this. That works too. But one of the tricks that I like to do is just use um, pre-painted wood and then just mask it. So this is the back side and then the front side. And what I'm using here, this is Gorilla Tape. Very, very, very sticky Gorilla Tape. But that's what works here. So I'm just gonna gently lay it over and then take that masking off. So sometimes I've used um, like little tweezers, but this is kind of a nice, quick lift up all of those little teeny pieces because sometimes there's a lot of little pieces and that's what I have on the scoring. And if you'll notice the scoring, I mean, it's it doesn't read real clearly. And the reason for that is because I made it just a little bit smaller so that when you lay your letters on there, um, they don't they don't stick out. All of the lines will not stick out. They won't stick out from your other layers that you lay on top. Okay, so all my masking gone. So um, that's just one of the tricks is I wanna share with you. I do like to pre-paint some wood um, for some projects, um, optional, but it's kind of something fun I like to do. 
especially if I was painting several of these, um, that's probably the way I would go. Okay, so now I'll just, oh, you know what? I got my leaves. So I'll set that aside and let me come back to my little leaves here. So I've got my Valspar color. I have Valspar. This is Glowing Leaf. And that's what I'll use for the lighter. And then this is my Eucalyptus Leaves color. And I got way too much paint. You only need a little bit for just a few little leaves. This one doesn't want to come out. Sometimes the tips get clogged, but I still prefer using the bottles than the jars. Okay. Okay, so let me come back to my, my sponge here. So I'm going to pick up my darker and my lighter just on the same sponge and then I'm just going to walk it back and forth just to blend. So I'll just hold that and then I'm just going to pat it, pat it on here. And if you want the lighter to come down farther on your leaf then just walk it one way or the other if you want more dark or more light. But I think those look pretty good. I think those look pretty good. That looks great. I'm just going to let those dry. So those don't take much time at all. Okay, now all the fun part is we're going to just start gluing this together. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my frame. And then once I get this put together, I'm going to show you some sneak peeks of my 4th of July um, files that are coming up that are going to be available very soon in my shop. We're just getting some last minute painting done on these. So if you get lots of glue on your project, just tap it off on your paper towel, your paper, whatever you're working on. And then I'm just going to lay it right on top. I see some fuzzies from the wood. This takes precision, you guys. I fill it around with my fingers to make sure I get where I need to be. Okay, once I feel like everything is in place, then I'll push on it and just hold it. Hold it for a few seconds. And I don't have any score lines for the flower because I thought you can just kind of lay it um, in the area that you want to lay it. But I have score lines for the, the word mother and then the word friend. Goodness, maybe I should grab that Gorilla Tape to get this off. I'm sure it would work. There's my flower. Okay, and then here's my pieces. So I don't see any extra pieces that are in there. So I think these this leaf, that's really going to make this project pop once you pop that green on. Okay, so again, I'm just going to just put a little bit of glue. Just little dots of glue on my project. Just kind of tapping it. I'm not really squeezing to get lots of globs, but there are end up getting a few globs somewhere, so I just tap it on my paper towel. And then I'm going to lay it down. And always lift up your project and look at the top, because sometimes those little score marks will peek out at the top if you're just looking from the bottom. So just kind of look at it all around. Once you can see 
it's covered good. There you go. Let's do the word friend. Okay. So I'm just going to lay it just on top of those score lines and then lift it up, peek around, make sure you have it where you want it, and then press and hold it for just a few seconds. Okay, I'm gonna just look at the orientation of my flower. Do the same thing with the flower. going to lay it on here just wherever you think it looks great okay and my leaves are dry they don't take long to dry so we'll put one up here or two at the top and then one at the bottom below the below the flower so it is a quite a quick and easy project Easy to paint, easy to put together, and it looks fantastic. It's a lovely Mother's Day gift. Okay, so there we have it. It's all done. So it was pretty quick and easy. So it looks like um, I'm in 27 minutes. However, I'm talking and explaining how to do this. So you could see if you were painting this, it wouldn't take much time at all. And even if you did two or three at a time, um, it would even be that much faster. So, and here's our easel that we did. I think, well, I have two of them here. So it's gonna look so cute on our easel. So just, it would be darling just on, like on your mother's dresser somewhere like that there's so many different places to put this so turn around so you can see it upright i think i might have had i don't know if it's upside down to you or if it's right side up i get confused on the the orientation with my camera but anyway so that is what i have for our mother's day so we have the two different ones oh i do love the peach i love the rose too so if you're kind of peachy or rose i think they both look beautiful so they're both lovely okay so let me just push some of these things aside put the lid on my glue my my glue lid does not even fit anymore i have just mangled the top so anyway it just kind of sits on there so let me introduce you to some of my really fun fourth of july projects that i have so this is um a new one that I designed. So this is what's called a chunky shelf sitter frame. And I call it that is because the frame is actually thick. All of this was cut on my Glowforge. Now I have done a lot of frames in the wood shop um, for different craft fairs. But those of you who do not have um, woodworking tools, this is a neat idea because it actually stands if I can get a flat surface, it will stand on its own. Now, I find that it's a little bit bigger, so this is not a very flat surface that I have here, but it will stand on its own. So I have another sign that I am going to paint with you in just a few days, another 4th of July sign, and I'm actually going to go um, four layers thick. So what I like about this is when I do, let me just grab, I am going to grab one of my wood signs really quick
Okay, so this is my, this is the wish sign that we did. This is actually my, um, my sham, well, my um, St. Patrick's Day one that I had on my shelf. So this is actually done with my, um, my base wood. And then I have used um, some pine here to create the base. And obviously this is really sturdy and will stand on its own. So my idea is I wanna create a sign. So those of you who do not have woodworking tools can still create a sign that will stand up all by itself. Now, of course you can use an easel to stand up signs or you can use um, kickstands. What that is is kind of like um, a piece or two on top the back so that it, that it will stand. Now that's an idea too. But um, my idea is I wanted to create a chunky shelf sitter that it stands all by itself, just like my chunky bunnies or my um, my Mother's Day home. That's another one of my favorite of my my houses. When you stack three together, they stand up all by themselves. So, so I'm gonna do another one, and I think I'll put four layers so it really stands by itself. And I. I like how I did the corners. So this is how my husband and I designed these signs. So we router the inside of these pieces of wood. And so this piece of wood is laying inside on all sides. So it's not obviously not gonna fall out or anything like that. Um, but if you see the edges, this is how we've done it, is we've done the long piece on top, the short piece in the in the center here, and the long on the bottom. And so that's what I'm creating with this, is I'm creating, I've got the short here, so it actually looks like it's been framed. So it's another idea. So here is my, um, my God Bless America sign. And then another come, my fun shelf sitters are going to be my, my chunky rockets. So these are my chunky rockets and they'll, they'll stand all by themselves. So they are three layers thick of quarter inch wood. And then I have, um, they will have tags. So there's four different si designs of the rockets. This is another one. And you're gonna see a spelling error. So I'm glad somebody pointed that out to me. Um, Jen pointed that out to me so that I could correct it before I uh, did my final draft. But anyway, I thought these turned it out really cute and these are chunky too. So, and then I'm gonna ha have a set of chunky stars and shiplap stars. And um, there's going to be, oh, I've got some Uncle Sam projects coming up that are just so cute. I can't wait to share all of these projects with you. So 4th of July is, um, the next group of things that I'm working on together. I guess I can tip it up since I'm just talking to you. So, but I think these turned out super cute. And these, these are fun to put on the mantle and they're gonna be four different sizes. So the tallest one is, I think it's almost seven inches tall. So, and then I think the smallest is around four. So I wanna say the tallest is six or seven and the smallest is around four. But anyway, these are really, really fun. These are fun. So they're great to put on your shelves, decorate for all of the summer months. But anyway, I hope you all had a good time with me today creating our Mother's Day sign. I thought it turned out really cute, but this file is available in my shop. And I also will have, um, those who got purchased the file, I'm going to send you a message and let you know that I will be able to get that new file to you, the file that has the, um, the new easel. But anyway, I hope you all have a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you later. Bye.